Hi there, I'm Justina of Just Classical, and I am a regular homeschooling mom like you who is in the thick of homeschooling my kids. Now, I do have a business, it's called Just Classical, and I provide music and art homeschooling resources to families, and I have a membership called Just Classical Fine Arts Membership. So thank you for joining me today in this masterclass, and let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. So welcome to this masterclass, The Secret to Boosting Brain Development and Academic Achievement. Now, I know that whenever we're watching a, an online training like this, it's easy to get distracted. So I wanna encourage you to really give yourself the time to soak in this training. I am going to be sharing a ton of information with you because it's such an important topic. So if you can, silence your cell phone, turn off your alerts, and get everyone situated for a little bit so that this can be time where you can focus. For the next hour, hopefully just about an hour or so, if you have questions, uh, give yourself that gift of focus. Now, if you do have questions, there is a chat. So you can put your questions in the chat and I will be sure to answer those at the end. So let's get started. The secret to boosting brain development and academic achievement. Well, first of all, I wanna ask a few questions. Does this sound like you? You want to boost your children's brains for academic, physical, emotional, and spiritual success. Okay, we wanna prime their brains, right? Um, or does this sound like you? You want your children to have a well-rounded education, but you don't feel confident in teaching all subjects. Does this sound like you? You're planning your next homeschool year and you're trying to decide on what is really important to focus on and what curriculum you would like to use for the next year. And does this sound like you? You just don't have the time for another curriculum that requires two to three hours of prep for every hour of lessons, especially for subject areas you do not feel confident in teaching. Well, if any of these or all of these sound familiar, I want you to know that you're in exactly the right place. And today's training is going to give you clarity on the secret essential area of study, which enhances every area of development and education, as well as I want to give you a starting place for adding this secret essential area of study to your homeschool so that you will know where to start and have confidence in teaching. Now, before we dive in, I just want to give you a quick preview of what's ahead so that you can know what to expect from today's masterclass. So I am going to share how one secret essential area of study perfectly correlates with normal childhood development in listening, motor, language, social, emotional, and cognitive development. I'm also going to talk about how this one secret essential area of study boosts the brain in academic areas like the core areas of reading, writing, arithmetic, reasoning, and memorization. We're also going to talk about how this one secret essential area of study helps the brain in non-academic areas like listening, motor skills, emotional growth, creativity, and enjoyment of life. And at the end, I'm going to share how I can help you in this one secret essential area of study. So let's start with a question. What are the essential things we should include in our children's education? Now, this is a question that I've asked myself and heard from others many times. When we get started with homeschooling, we ask ourselves, what should my kindergartner know? What subjects should we include? What curriculum should we use? Now, we've heard of the good old three R's, right? Reading, writing, and arithmetic. Shouldn't we just focus on those? Um, and more recently, there's been a push for making sure our kids have a foundation in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And if we've come from a public school setting ourselves, we may think that we should put a high priority on academics and testing. 
But then as Christians, we also want to include a solid foundation of Bible knowledge and character development. There's just so much to think about. So it's easy to get overwhelmed. Well, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am Justina of Just Classical. And as I mentioned, I am a homeschooling mom of three whom I've homeschooled since birth. And I've had to ask all these questions. Now I have also studied about the brain and childhood development with my degree and experience working in music therapy and as an early childhood music educator. You see, I worked with clients in music therapy for a few years, and then I heard about an early childhood music program, which I could teach in my own studio from my own home. I was delighted to find that this program used music activities that were similar to what I had used in music therapy and which enhanced brain development in young children. So I taught young children for several years before I got married and had my own children. And then I was able to take my own children through the music classes and the art lessons. So music and art were the foundation of my kids' education since I even taught music classes when I was pregnant with them. I didn't add a lot of academics in their preschool years, but the music classes and activities were the complete homeschool curriculum at that time. Now, I am a lifelong musician, a former music therapist, and early childhood music educator. So of course, I wanted to include music and art in my children's lives. But I was also able to see firsthand and on an intimate level how music and art helped my own children in every stage of child development and enhanced brain development. I was also able to see how music and art integrate with other subjects like history, math, and even science. Well, my children are teenagers now. They are 16, 15, and 12, and they are pursuing a well-rounded education. They are all very creative. They play piano. They are athletes. They love history and to visit historical sites, as well as to learn new things. They are avid readers, and my son excels in math, and my daughters are artistic. And you can see here, they like chickens. So I can see how their early music and art education has helped them to grow in all these areas. I believed music and art were important before I had children, but now I've gotten to experience firsthand in an intimate way, the benefits of adding music and art to education with my own children. And I am here to tell you that fine arts education is the secret essential area of study that boosts the brain and enhances every other area of study for academic, physical, emotional, and spiritual success. So the secret is out. Yes, the secret is fine arts education is the secret essential area of study that boosts the brain and enhances every other area of study for academic, physical, emotional, and spiritual success. So let's go back to my key question. What are the essential things we should include in our children's education? I will always say Bible knowledge and character are essential, but as I've also just revealed, music and art enhance development as well as boost your child's brain power in all areas of academics and even transcend academics to emotional, creative, and even character building growth and enjoyment of God and life. Yes, fine arts enhances the Bible and character training too. So music and art are not just entertainment. Music and art are not just electives. <clears throat> music and art are essential in education. Why is this? Well, music and art enhance each stage of child development and thus affect the brain in foundational non-academic areas. Also, music and art boost the brain for academic success and integrate with other subject disciplines. Music and art help make us better humans as we develop expression 
and our creative side as image bearers of God. And music and art help us enjoy God. So let's look at each of these areas a little more closely. And again, this is gonna be a lot of information. So try to take it all in stride, but I want you to see the research behind all of this as well. So let's start with music and art enhance each stage of child development and thus affect the brain in foundational non-academic areas. So if you have little children in your home still, then music and art are the most wonderful preschool curriculum. So let's take a look at normal child development and compare it to musical and artistic development. So when we compare these three areas of child development, you'll see I have these three lists, child development, musical development, and artistic development. So let's put them together to find the corresponding elements in each. So let's start with listening. Listening, as you can see, is the beginning of child development. It is also the beginning of musical development. There is not a corresponding element for this in artistic development. But listening is the cornerstone of development. And we often ignore how important it is to listen because we live in a highly visual world where children and adults spend hours engaging our eyes on televisions, computers, video games, and electronic devices. But listening is essential. Did you know that babies start hearing at 12 weeks in the womb and they start remembering what they heard at 20 weeks? A baby is able to hear and distinguish his or her mother's voice in the womb. Now, a baby also first orders its world through sound. Since the baby's unable to see in the womb and since a baby's sight is unfocused at birth. Then, in order to communicate and develop language skills, the baby must learn to listen and learn to discriminate between meaningful sound and noise. Also, listening heightens development of attention span, concentration, impulse control, and social skills, such as learning to listen to others, having communication, sensitivity, and compassion. And music enhances this foundational, foundational principle of listening because music is sound. Also, music can be enjoyed at all ages and skill levels through listening. When involved in music, the ear is being engaged and trained to listen. Neural pathways in the brain are firing and the proper foundation is laid for further development. So listening is the cornerstone of development as well as for musical development. Now, the ear serves two purposes. It serves for hearing and listening, which is the cochlear function, and it also has a vestibular function, which is the control of balance. So as the ear is the control center for these two functions of listening and the vestibular apparatus, it should be no surprise that motor skills are the second stage of development. There is an intimate psychophysical involvement between sound, hearing, and listening, the ear's cochlear function, and movement in terms of balance position and posture, the ear's vestibular function. So children by nature move constantly, so movement activities meet them where they are at. Also, physical movement helps children develop an internal sense of beat that seems to correlate with reading and math abilities. And this is not merely hearing the beat, but feeling the beat. Thus, steady beat activities, which of course are enhanced by music with a steady beat, are important in early childhood development. Now, music obviously is a motivating factor in motor development for the natural response to music is to move to it. Have you ever seen a young child hear a song with a strong beat and start doing a little dance of bouncing up and down? They are learning to develop that internal sense of beat. Now, music provides structure for movement and also provides kinesthetic learning opportunities. Further, movement activities are the foundation for cognitive learning, and they aid in the development of purposeful movement, impulse control, 
gross and fine motor coordination, eye-hand coordination, spatial concepts, and problem solving. And here is where artistic development enters with fine motor and eye-hand coordination as a toddler picks up a crayon and begins to scribble. So next in child development is language. I will talk more about this in the next section, but you can see that music and art have correlating elements that enhance language skills. So next is social skills. Children must learn to interact with other people, both other children and adults in an acceptable way. So they learn impulse control, like not hitting the kid who has a toy one wants, and they learn to take turns. They learn to use their words to work out conflicts and how to be sensitive and compassionate toward others' needs as well as their own. Now, one of the most amazing aspects in music, in my opinion, is the social aspect of an ensemble. Music is an opportunity for people to work together to create something beautiful. Whether it is unison singing or diverse parts that form exquisite harmonies. Music is an opportunity to learn positive social interaction through listening and expressing. Also in art, children can have an opportunity to make art together or share art they have created with others as a social outlet. So we can see that element in the artistic development as well. All right, the next stage of development is emotional or creative expression. Children become more aware of their emotions and how to control them. And outlets may be sought to express emotions in a healthy way. Aggressive behaviors are appropriate in competitive sports, for example. Also, music and art can be an important outlet for expressing ourselves. As Hans Christian Andersen, the famous fairy tale writer said, where words fail, music speaks. Okay, the pinnacle of development is cognitive reasoning. Children are reading, then writing, and ultimately thinking for themselves. And we want them to be able to become responsible adults who contribute to society and forge new technology and relationships for our progress as a civilization. This cognitive level of development begins in the teen years. In music, reading and writing are the means of expression, and ultimately one will be able to write new music as well. In art, one can express ideas, issues, concepts, and higher level thinking through representative art. All right, so these are all the stages of development for child development here, musical development here, and artistic. And you can see that they correspond, musical and artistic development perfectly correspond to child development and enhance every stage. So why would you want to add music and fine arts to your child's education? And remember, I said that music and fine arts are that secret element of education that enhances everything and boosts the brain. Well, we want to add them because they enhance every stage of development. Now, as a parent, we also want to ask again, are there any other reasons? that we would want to add music and fine arts to our child's education. Well, yes, music and art boost the brain for academic success and integrate with other subject disciplines. Now for homeschool parents who are concerned about the academic side of our children's education, here are ways music and art boost academic and cognitive abilities. Number one, music and art boost language, processing, such as reading and writing and comprehension. So I gave you the development, but now I'm going into the academics, how music and art boost the academics. Okay, well, I did show you that in child development, language is one of the stages of development. And so now I'm coming back to that to give you more of the details, because just as language has patterns of letters, words, phrases, and sentences, so does music. And music imitates conversation and that musical phrases include questions and answers, silence, listening, and response. So as a child is exposed to the structure of music, language and communication patterns are reinforced. 
Similarly, art helps develop communication skills as well. By drawing and creating pictures, children are making connections between images and words. This helps them to better understand both what they see and what they hear. And this improves their ability to communicate with others. Now, in my recent Music and Art Homeschool Summit, I interviewed Annie Nelson, who shared how one of her daughters had severe dyslexia and her husband Nels believed in the power of music to help her. And so I'll quote what Annie said. I remember going to Nels when she was about 12 and just saying, she'll never get it. We're wasting our time. She cannot keep rhythm. And Nels said, I think it's helping her. You wait and see. We're keeping her in it. This is doing so much good for her brain. And it turns out, I can tell you, he was totally right. Violin has been Evangeline's lifeline to the bigger world around her. She had great teachers that helped her in many ways. She still has some trouble with rhythm. They have all said it, but she learned. When she plays, she really touches the heart of her listeners. So they found, El Annie and Nels Nelson found that music actually did help their daughter with her dyslexia and her ability to learn in other areas. And so that just shows how music and art boost language processing, such as reading and writing and comprehension. Another area that music help and art help with is math skills. So did you know that reading music includes learning to um, count quarter and half and whole notes, which are essentially fractions? When a student is learning rhythm, he or she is also learning to count. And not just counting numbers, but the music student is using logic to count out the rhythms and bars as he or she progresses through the piece. So music requires the student to perform mathematical processes like division on the fly. There are many musical concepts which have mathematical counterparts. And so, of course, research also shows a link between music education and success in school math. A study by the Royal Conservatory of Music in Canada, for example, found that students in the arts program scored significantly higher on mathematical tests of computation and estimation than did students in a control group. And art also has a correlation with math because it reinforces the concepts of spatial awareness, understanding of shapes, pattern recognition, symmetry, and proportion. Okay, so in the academic areas, music and art boost language processing and math skills. And the third area it enhances is it helps students to understand history and culture better. Through art study, we connect with others across centuries and cultures, especially when art study is paired with history. So I'm gonna give you a little history lesson using art and music, okay? Music and art were created in certain time periods, and so they reflect the worldview, traditions, culture, and politics of the time. For example, pre-Renaissance European art is mostly church art. It's these flat, expressionless icons. Because after the fall of Rome, when the barbarian hordes destroyed most of the art of Rome, the Catholic Church was the main power and influence in the Middle Ages, and so they controlled art. The music of this time is called Gregorian chant, for the monks of the Catholic Church sought to live simple lives, and thus their music is these simple tunes sung in unison in worship to God. Now, if we know that little bit of history that surrounds this, then this art and the music make sense. Simple times, art and music basically controlled by the Catholic Church. Now later, during the Renaissance, music includes small groups of instruments and singers, such as minstrels who traveled and performed to live. And during the Renaissance also, people developed humanistic ideas and became interested in studying and drawing the human body as the pinnacle of God's creation, so that nudity is a regular part of art from this period. The historical context helps one to understand the subjects and wise of the artworks of this time. So these are by Michelangelo, his drawings. Actually, that one, I think they're both Michelangelo, yeah. Um, so that's his famous statue, David. All right, and here's another example. I am not a lover of Picasso, 
But when I understood that this famous painting, Guernica, was a response to a horrific slaughter of citizens in a Spanish town by the Nazis in World War II, the black, white, and gray colors and disjointed style of cubism actually seemed a fitting expression of this topic. Now with orchestral music, if one understands the different eras of music, the music of that period makes more sense. So in the Baroque era, which is roughly 1600 to 1800, the music contains frills and trills reflecting the style of the time of decorated architecture, dress, and wigs. So when we listen to For Unto Us a Child is Born from George Friedrich Handel's oratorio Messiah, and we understand the frivolous nature of the Baroque era, it will make sense why there are multiple notes for one word. So you can see the word born, all those notes, are being sung at the same time. Now, music of the classical era, on the other hand, is known to be orderly and structured. So this may be why many people suggest that listening to the music of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, a classical era composer, is helpful when studying. And then when we look at the historical context of another classical era composer, Ludwig von Beethoven, we can bring more meaning and interest to his compositions. Beethoven lived at the same time as Napoleon, and Beethoven viewed Napoleon as a hero of democratic ideals, and so he originally dedicated his Symphony Number no. 3, Heroic, to Napoleon. But when Napoleon declared himself emperor, Beethoven tore the page in half and instead dedicated the symphony to his patron, Prince Joseph Franz Maximilian Lobkowitz. And then the Romantic era music is characterized by the unabashed expression of emotion. So if you listen to the symphonies of Johannes Brahms or Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, knowing they are Romantic era composers, you will understand why you find yourself on an emotional introspective ride through the music. And then there's the modern era of music, which is about 1900 to present, and it's filled with musical innovation and breaking the rules of the structure of the previous eras. So if you listen to Cloud WC, Igor Stravinsky, or Philip Glass, you may say, I don't like classical music because the sounds are so disjointed. But a ballet about a maiden dancing herself to death in a sacrificial ritual, which is what Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring is about, should sound chaotic and dissonant. So the music does reflect the topic, and we can only appreciate this with the historical context. So I always bring out some of the history of the music and the art, but when you're studying history, it's really important to think about what is the music and art of the time? What is the message in that? Because that's teaching you the culture and the worldview. So music and art should be connected to history and they do enhance the study of each historical era. All right, so what's another area that music and art boost academically or cognitively? Well, music and art help with analysis, critical thinking, and reasoning. You see, in learning to read music, one can participate in higher levels of music making. So not just understanding the notes on the page, but also understanding the genre of the music, the nuances of expression, and then one can also analyze the structure of the music, because the music has certain structures, and uh, each pitch and a scale is given a number and so then when you think about intervals um, the distance between one pitch and another pitch we call those intervals um, and then when you put some of those intervals together they make chords so you can analyze those things and it teaches that reasoning and that's critical thinking it's analysis so students who have early musical training will develop the areas of the brain related to language and reasoning. And the left side of the brain is better developed with music and songs can help imprint information on young minds. So both sides of the brain are better developed with music. Now let's look at art. Looking at art and analyzing what the picture is about or means helps with learning to think, reason, and analyze. Similarly, one of the benefits of drawing is that it teaches children how to creatively problem solve. They learn to think outside the box and come up with new ideas. 
All right, another area of cognitive development and boosting the brain is music and art are powerful tools for memorization. Now we all know that one of the best ways to memorize something is using a song or rhythm. Think of the ABC song. We start our children in memorizing the most basic facts of language with a song. And my children have memorized a catechism, the Westminster Shorter Catechism, which has up 107 questions to songs that I wrote. And that's a lot of information, but the music made it easy and enjoyable to memorize. So it's easier to memorize stuff to music. And if you're just looking straight at music for performance, if you memorize a music piece to perform it, it also correlates with verbal memory skills. That is, memorizing the music actually improves the non-musical memory as well. Now, art also can help improve the memory. And part of the reason for that is that when you draw something, okay, so when you're talking about art, I'm talking about drawing here, um, Drawing is a highly effective way to boost the memory and increases recall by nearly double. It is superior to only reading or writing because it causes one to process information in multiple ways. You're processing it visually, kinesthetically as you're drawing it, and semantically. So through drawing, information is encoded in the memory through connections to other memories with layers of the visual memory of the image the kinesthetic memory of our hand drawing the image, and the semantic memory of remembering the meaning of the image. All of these connections and layers increase the probability that the concept being drawn will later be recalled. And drawing also improves the memory because it is active. If students draw pictures of the things they are learning or take pictorial notes, they must wrestle with what they're learning and recreate it in a way that makes sense to them. So music and art boost the brain's ability to memorize in other disciplines. All right, and participation in music and art contribute to general academic su success and increased test scores. With all the benefits that music and art bring to kids' language, math, memory, and self-assessment, there is no surprise that there is a strong relationship between music and art and general academic success. Studies have shown that students who participate in the arts scored higher in English and math than students who had no arts at all. Also, according to the College Board, high school students in arts programs scored higher than their non-musical peers on the SAT. And then data from the College Board from 2015 um, shows students who took four years of arts and music classes while in high school which is only 18% of the test takers, scored an average of 92 points higher on their SATs than students who only took one half year or less, which was 16% of test takers. The scores were 1077 versus 985. Also, a 1994 survey showed that um, music majors as a group had the highest acceptance rate to medical school. Okay, one more thing. Participation in music and art impact long-term success. Now, I don't have the stats for art, but students with a music background tend to rank higher in common measures of long-term success, such as educational attainment and income. So a 2007 poll by Harris Interactive found that nearly nine out of 10 people with postgraduate education had participated in music while in school. And 83% of those with incomes of $150,000 or more had had a music education. Also, the College Board's 2006 study found that high school students who participated in band or orchestra reported the lowest lifetime and current use of drugs and alcohol. So overall, participation in the arts grows the brain and keeps it active as it develops more neural pathways. So Dr. Eric Rasmussen, chair of the Early Childhood Music Department at the Peabody Preparatory of the St. John, I'm sorry, of the Johns Hopkins University, um, says, there's some good neuroscience research that children involved in music have larger growth of neural activity than people not in music training. When you're a musician and you're playing an instrument, you have to be using more of your brain. And Annie Patel, an associate professor of psychology 
at Tufts University and the author of Music, Language, and the Brain says, if we know how and why music changes the brain in ways that affect other cognitive abilities, this could have a real impact on the value we put on it as an activity in the schools. Not to mention all the impact it has on emotional development, emotional maturity, social skills, stick to things we typically don't measure in school, but which are hugely important in a child's ultimate success. All right, so this leads to my next point. I, I talked about I talked about child development and I've talked about academics, right? So now let's talk about one other area. Music and art help make us better humans as we develop expression and our creative side as image bearers of God, right? We're not just after development. We think about that a lot in our children's early years. We think about academics during the school years, but ultimately what do we want? We want good humans, right? Human who want to serve others and love God. <clears throat> so let's talk about this other side of just making us human. Music and art foster kids creativity, which can have an impact on their futures. So employers identify creativity as one of the top five skills important for success in the workforce. Okay, so we're thinking about their development when they're little, we're thinking about their academics when they're in school, and then we think about, well, we want them to get a job. I, I failed to mention that. So yes, we want them to get a job, but what's going to help them get a job? Is it just STEM? Is it just science, technology, engineering, and math? Is that the most important thing that we should be focusing on for our children's education? I would resoundingly say, no, don't even focus on that at first. Focus on the music and the arts because they need the creativity for success in the workforce ultimately. Um, the partnership also reports that originality and flexibility are benefits of music and art education because music and art involve creativity and innovation. Also, graduates from music and art programs testify that creativity, teamwork, communication, and critical thinking are skills required in their work, no matter whether they are working in music, art, or other professions. Now, most of us don't work in music and art but what you get out of music and art is that creativity. So that's why STEM, okay, most of us know it as STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, they actually kind of change it to STEAM after about a year or two. Uh, not everybody uses the term STEAM still, but without the arts, the critical processes of creativity and innovation are missing. So it's great to, to focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. That's seem what seems to be what our world wants right now but without the arts there's something missing all right also music and art provide an in active learning environment and promote participation in life so i already mentioned that we live in an overly visually stimulating society another factor to consider about involvement in music and art is that they are interactive so TV and computer software producers purport to offer educational programming, but really it is passive learning. So there's a book called Endangered Minds by Jane Healy, and she proposes that while there is, of course, a genetic element to intelligence, environments can shape brains and intelligence levels. So studies were done with rats in which some were given an enriched environment with playmates and toys, such as wheels and balls, and where they could explore and they could push and they could roll and climb and just be really active, right? Because they had all these great things to do. They were active. That's the point. Now, other rats just lived in a cage and they had nothing to do. It was impoverished conditions of merely living in a cage. So they said that those rats who were in the enriched and interactive environment developed larger brain cortexes by as much as 11 percent now interestingly there's a third group of rats and they were given an opportunity to watch the rats in the enriched environment but their brains did not grow any more of those rats in the impoverished cages so the point here is that as author jane healy states children need stimulation and intellectual challenges, but they must be actively involved in their learning, not responding passively while another brain, their teachers or parents, laboriously develops new synapses in their behalf. Now she wrote this book before technology was such a huge thing, so I would add 
children need an active environment and, and not just let the computer do everything for them or the TV show do everything for them. They need to be actively developing new synapses. So we're not meant to be, oh, I won't go there yet. We're not meant to be passive, sitting on a couch, playing video games or watching TV all the time. Those do not make our best selves, but the arts do give us an interactive learning environment and they make us participate actively in life. We listen to music, we look at art, or we create music and art. We give beauty to the world and make it a better place. So that brings me to the next, oops, going the wrong way. Next point, which is music and art bring enjoyment of beauty and life. You see, humans seek beauty. Music and art help us to do this. When we sing or listen to music, or create art or look at art. We are also enjoying beauty and ministering to our own souls, which can lift us up into a whole new world. As Willis P. Kent said, this then is the purpose of a course in music appreciation, not to teach us facts about composers, but to help us love their works, to make Beethoven's symphonies as essential to us as are the plays of Shakespeare, in short, to give us a new sense organ for the perception of beauty. And this is true of art appreciation too, even though this quote is about music appreciation. We want a new sense organ for the perception of beauty. Ideally, we want our children to experience success throughout life itself. The benefits may be psychological, spiritual, and physical. Through music and art, we develop self-expression, which in turn leads to confidence and fulfillment and ultimately helps make life meaningful. So as a former US Secretary of Education said, studying music and the arts elevates children's education, expands students' horizons, and teaches them to appreciate the wonder of life. So why would we want to add music and art to our children's education? Well, another reason is, as David Kearns, he was a chairman and chief executive officer of Xerox Corporation. He says, why arts and education? Why education at all? The purpose of education is not simply to inform, but to enrich and enlighten, to provide insights into life as it has been led and as it may be led. No element of the curriculum is better suited to that task than arts education. So yes, we should be concerned about math and reading and academics, right? But really, ultimately, we want to enrich and enlighten our children's lives. We want to have insights into life as it has been led and as it may be led. And we're gonna get that through arts education. Okay, so finally, Music and art help us enjoy God. So we talked about development and how it boosts the brain and development, how it helps with academic success and how it just helps us to enjoy being human, but also music and art help us enjoy God. As Christians, we know that educating our children is not really just about academics. Our biggest desire for ourselves and for our children is to know and worship God. And guess what? Music and art can help us do that. God is the creator and he is the author of creativity and beauty. He is the one who has filled his creation with beautiful sounds. As Oscar Hammerstein understood, all the sounds of the earth are like music. And God gave us an instrument in our own bodies, our voices. In the Bible, he instructs us to sing praises to him. When we sing in worship, we are enjoying God. God also directs his people to play the harp and the lyre and the trumpet and the cymbals in worship to him. And he encouraged the creation of instruments and he inspired the composers to write music so we can enjoy God through listening to and understanding the great orchestral and choral works of music. And did you know that many of our hymns are based on tunes of famous composers? Ode to Joy is from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. O Sacred Head Now Wounded is from Johann Sebastian Bach's St. Matthew's Passion. O God Beyond All Praising is by Gustav Holst from his piece Jupiter from his work The Planets. 
As I look through my hymnal that we use at my church, I found hymns adapted from tunes by Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, Grieg, Handel, Haydn, Holst, Mendelssohn, Von Williams, and others. So we use the works of great composers in our worship. Also, as we study his creation, a form of art we call science, we get to know more about God and thus glorify him as creator. Man has long desired to capture the beauty of creation in pictures too. And thus we as humans who are made in God's image desire to imitate his creative skills. Not all of us are as skilled in producing art, so we can appreciate the art of others who are mere imitators of God the creator and artist. Okay, so none of us educate our children because we want educated adults. We educate our children because we want our children to be equipped for what God wants them to do in the future. As Christians, we understand that education is not that the child needs to know what he needs to know, but that he needs to become who he needs to become for God to use him in the future. We're not just educating children, we're raising tomorrow's leaders. We're raising tomorrow's doctors and tomorrow's politicians and tomorrow's church leaders and tomorrow's scientists who make technological breakthroughs. That's why we do this, right? And music and art have historical proof that the kids who have music and art in their lives are so much more well-rounded and prepared in all these other areas to excel. Again, I said, music and art are that secret subject that enhances everything else. So what we want for our children when we educate them is that they will be successful adults. And a child who has music and art as a huge part of their lives has a much better chance of that in all of these areas. So this is about how we are preparing this child to be the adult he needs to be, to do what God is calling him to do in the world and to glorify and enjoy God, right? So music and art are powerful tools for education. Music and art are essential. Remember, they, um, it makes sense to push music and art education and to allow young generations to gain these wonderful benefits. They enhance development at every stage. They boost the brain for academic success and integration with other subject disciplines. They make us better humans as we develop our creative side as image bearers of God. And they help us enjoy God and become the people that they, they need to be, or that is our students need to be, to do what God is calling them to do in this world. So what should we do with all of this information? Well, involve your child in music. Oops, I forgot to add art on there. Involve your child in music and art. Of course, right? And this one, again, it relates to music, but there are other quotes similar to this. Music is a more potent instrument than any other for education, and children should be taught music before anything else. So that brings us to the question, which is, how can you add music and art education to your homeschool easily to enjoy all these brain boosting and life enhancing benefits? Well, option number one is you do your own research, you present music and art in your homeschool yourself, because I know as homeschool moms, we love to research, right? We love to go to the library and look for books and search for YouTube videos of recordings and artworks, and we can do all the work on our own. But maybe you don't feel adequate to do that, or maybe you don't want to put in the time, because I know that a lot of people tell me that one of the big hang-ups for them and including music and art is i don't have a background in this i don't know how to do it and that is okay there's other ways to do it another way that you can include music and art in your own homeschool is you can enroll in in-person classes or private lessons which is totally what i recommend if this is at all possible for you um i know our world has changed a bit in the last three years and so for a while, in-person stuff wasn't as available, but I think it is again. And so I highly recommend that if you have little kids, you look up Music Garden, and that's M-U-S-I-K-G-A-R-T-E-N, or Kinder Music. They're both German spellings, um, or Music Together, and you find in-person classes to take your little kids to. 
And a lot of times these classes will go through early elementary, but even babies can be getting a ton out of these classes. So go enroll in in-person classes. Um, and then sometimes they end up having group piano classes or group guitar classes through those programs as well. So that's what I would recommend for early childhood music if you can do in-person classes. And then by early elementary, they might be ready for private lessons. And so if you can do that, get into private lessons. Um, there's also art classes, usually group classes, or sometimes there are individual drawing lessons or painting lessons. So in-person classes, I totally highly recommend. But if this isn't possible for you where you're at, then another option is to enroll in online music and art classes. And a lot of times these can be enhancers to the private lessons, especially music appreciation classes can really enhance private lessons. So this is where I can help you. And I love to help people. And so I have a membership. It's called the Just Classical Fine Arts Membership. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about it so that you can see how you can add both music and art to your homeschool in one place. So the Just Classical Fine Arts Membership is a monthly membership where you and your children receive guided access through four areas of fine arts learning. Music appreciation, music fundamentals and performance, art appreciation, and art participation. So these are the four core areas of music and art education. So first of all, I'll just go in a little deeper. Music appreciation is learning about the instruments of the orchestra and the personalities and music of great composers so that the composers and their music come alive. And I do this through a course called the Composer Detective. Now, music appreciation, is just a caveat here, music appreciation does not just have to be about orchestral music, but that's usually what it refers to. So that is what we are focusing on in the Just Classical Fine Arts membership. So the second area we focus on is music fundamentals and performance, and that is understanding musical terms, developing aural training, which means developing the ear to hear and listen, and learning to read notes note values and names so the students will be able to play an instrument easily and so this includes some oral training some reading of notes some note values but also playing the tin whistle art appreciation is learning about the personalities and art of great artists so that the artists and their works come alive and then art participation uh, is developing basic drawing skills so students will experience confidence and be able to visually express themselves. Now, how do we cover all of this in the Just Classical Fine Arts membership? Well, each month you will receive access to units from my four courses in these four core areas of art and music education. So the first course is called the Composer Detective. It is a music appreciation course for families where children will learn about the orchestra instruments, orchestral areas, and music of influential composers. And these are the composers we cover. Then the Artist Detective is an art appreciation for families where children will learn about the lives and the artwork of great artists. And these are a few of the artists we cover, but this is specifically the Renaissance artists, but there's a lot more artists that we cover. Then we also do drawing with Rembrandt is a beginning drawing course. And making music with Handel is the music fundamentals and performance course where students learn about basic musical terms and concepts, as well as how to play the tin whistle. Now, my special twist in all of this of these courses is that I dress up as the composers and the artists in biographical videos. And then for the music courses, George Friedrich Handel is the guide. And for the art courses, Rembrandt, the Dutch master is the guide. So it's my way of bringing music, art and history to life. And it allows for these artists and composers to actually tell their own story. Now, what does it mean that you or let's see what what does that mean for what you actually get each month in the membership well what it is not is access to everything to just do on your own 
Um, so I do not just open the membership and now all of a sudden you have access to everything and all of the courses. It's actually a guided membership, okay? So it is guided access through the courses plus one live class a month. So what this actually means is that I give you access to only one unit from each course each month. So you're not overwhelmed and you know exactly what to do that month because you only have access to that particular unit for that month. It also means that you're gonna get new and fresh content each month so that you never get bored. And this means you get access to different units from Just Classical courses each month as long as you remain in the membership. So I actually give you access to the current month and the past month. So if you got a little behind, you still have time to finish up the past month's material and work on this month's material. All right, so let's talk about it a little more carefully. What do you get each month in the Just Classical Fine Arts membership? Well, you get one live class and it is either a music class or an art class and we alternate months. Um, and that way you get to interact with the teacher. So you meet George Friedrich Handel, who teaches about music one month, and then the next month you meet Rembrandt, who teaches a drawing lesson. So that is a value of $50. Um, you also get guided access through each of the four core areas of music and art education. Another value of $50. Uh, you get a community group. Um, this is hosted on Mighty Networks, and this is where students can share pictures of completed projects or interact with me or other people in the community. Also, you get a music fundamentals unit, a value of $17, and this consists of videos led by George Reader Candle, and there's worksheets for the core areas of music fundamentals and performance, teaching a basic concept or skill in music so that students become familiar with musical terms, note values, note names, rhythm, aural training, how to play the tin whistle, or other fundamental musical skills. It's actually worth a lot more than 17, but I put 17. The drawing lessons um, are for the core area of art participation in the form of video tutorials led by Rembrandt so that students will develop skills in drawing and thinking through visual perspectives. And then you also get a composer unit value of $29 for the core area of music appreciation. Now in these composer units, there's quite a bit. So you get a biography video so that you know who this composer is and you have fun getting to know him. You get a playlist of curated performances, which are videos on YouTube by the composer so that you and your child become familiar with and enjoy some of the great pieces and works of this composer. And then you get to know a few of the characteristics of the music. And you also get worksheets and activity sheets and quizzes so that you can interact with the terms and the facts about the composers and make the learning easy and fun. And then, of course, there's lesson plans and suggest that, that are suggested lesson plans and checklists so that you don't have to prepare the lessons in advance and you know what to do each day. And then the fourth unit that's included each month is the artist unit value $17 for the core area of art appreciation. And again, it includes similar things to the composer unit. It includes a biography video so that you know who the artist is and have fun getting to know him or her. You get a portfolio of curated artworks by the artist that you can print out. And this is so that you become familiar with and enjoy some of the famous works of this artist and get to know a few characteristics of the art. You also get the worksheets and activity sheets and quizzes so that you can interact with the terms and the facts about the artist and make the learning easy and fun. And you get the lesson plan suggestions and checklists so that you don't have to prepare the lessons in advance and you know what to do each day. So when you put all that together, this is actually a value of $299 a month. But um, as you see, when you enroll in Just Classical Fine Arts membership, you will have instant access to all the tools you need to teach with the confidence of an opera star because you will follow a clear path through the four core areas of music and art education. So, so many people say, I don't know where to get started. Well, I'm making it easy for you and, and putting it all right here for you in this membership. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, well, what is what does it cost, though? Because if you've shopped around, you know that in person music or art classes run from 30 to $50 a month and private lessons run 30 to $50 per half hour. 
So um, private art lessons, I, I've seen the rate of $60 an hour. So if you've been with me through this whole masterclass though, you know that music and art are super boosters of brain power. And so as I've just shown you, the monthly value is $299. And not only that, you get music and art all in one place. But I only charge $19 a month. Now, remember, for $19 a month, you're getting all these things, right? A live class, which alone is worth $50. Guided access through each of the four core areas of music and art education, also worth $50. A community group with a value of $80. A music fundamentals unit, $17. Drawing lessons, $57. Composer unit, $29. Artist unit, $17. Worth $299 a month, but I'm only charging $19 a month. But actually, I'm earning a special. It's springtime, and I think that a lot of people would benefit from being part of a membership, and it would be great structured activity for the summer coming up, right? If you don't do any other academics over the summer, I know there are year-round homeschoolers, but some of us like to take a break in the summer, and yet our kids still need a little structure, right? So this is a great opportunity to just have kind of fun lessons and artistic lessons and not be bogged down by the academic part of it. So I am running this spring special for $10 for the first month and then it's $19 a month after this. And guess what? This is for your whole family. It's not per child. So that's the wonderful thing. It is a family oriented membership. So remember, you can't touch music and art classes or private lessons for this price. So just so you know, I haven't said this yet, Just Classical Fine Arts membership is geared towards elementary and middle school, but it also could work for families of a variety of ages doing it all together. Um, your high school student will still get a ton out of all this stuff. But the thing about high school kids is they might not like the fact that the biography videos are me dressing up as the characters. But if they're slightly more open-minded teenagers, they still could get a lot of fun out of that because I have a friend who's in her 60s who loves my stuff because she's like, it's like Bugs Bunny. I love cartoons, right? So some of us, once we get past our teenage years, can accept cartoons still and <laughs> have fun with it. So yes, I dress up as the composers and the artists and there is a cartoon effect to it, by the way. But this really works well for families of a variety of ages. Um, but if you have older children, such as high school children, and the Just Classical Fine Arts membership is not a fit for you, but you do want something for your older children, let me know. Um, you can email me at support at justclassical.com, and I'm happy to refer you to other memberships that are geared towards older students or approach music and are a little differently than I do. But this is really great for elementary age kids and middle school kids, and it's just packed with information but I do have things for different levels as well. So if you're ready to take the leap, if you would like to become a member of the Just Classical Fine Arts membership, then you can get it for $10 for this month. And guess what? Today's May 1st. So you're gonna get the whole month. You're gonna get, you can get started right away. I just put in the new material last night. And um, so here is the website where you can sign up. It's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash just classical .com forward slash JC fam dash spring dash special. So maybe I'll get out of this share screen in a minute and put that link in for you as well um, in the chat. But just so you can see what it would look like when you go to that website, you're going to see a sales page that explains everything you get again, in case you want to review it. And then at the very bottom of the page, um, you'll see this form that you can fill out and I've already got the discount in there for you. You don't need a coupon code because the discounts in there. And so you can fill this out. You're going to hit the complete the order, big orange button, and then you'll get an email that tells you how to log in to the course platform. I plan on making a video tour of the course platform so people aren't confused as well. But um, anyway, if you're interested in this, just remember that the secret sauce, the secret element, of boosting your children's brain power and academics and making them well-rounded people is actually music and art education. So music and art are not just entertainment. Music and art are not just electives. Music and art are essential. And I would love to help you with this through the Just Classical Fine Arts membership. 
So I think that is the end of my slideshow. I will pull out of this, stop the share and see if there's any questions. I hope you enjoyed it then. I hope this really helped you guys. So thanks for joining me and I hope I'll see you inside the membership. All right, thanks, bye.